Assalamu alaikum. Now, I was sitting and pondering, like I normally do, stay humble, and it just came to me. Batman should be a Muslim. Now I know what you're thinking. Have you been drinking Zum Zum again? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> now come on, you should accept Islam because, well, he's nearly there, isn't he? He's got all the traits. All he needs to do is just read the Shahada. Now we all know who Batman is. <laughs> come on, don't look at me like that. You know this was coming. Don't worry, that's, that's out the way now. We can carry on. I know what some of you are going to be thinking. Why is he talking about Batman? There's so many other things that you could talk about. Yes, there is. But wisdom is a believer's lost property. Wherever he finds it, he takes it. Now why Batman out of all the other mans? Well, he's the only one who doesn't really have a superpower. So we can easily relate to him. So he lives in a city called Gotham. He sees all this crime and corruption going on. And he feels helpless. He can't do anything using his own face because, well, he's got, you know, a certain image. He's the boss, he's the one with the dodo, the momo, the peas. So now the question arises, what does he do? And how is it similar to the teachings of Islam? Number one, he decides to travel for knowledge and find his true self. He leaves his locality and he leaves the monies. Now what's the lesson? Well, traveling for knowledge is something which Muslims have been doing for centuries. It's part of our teaching. There's more barakah in that knowledge which you learn after traveling. Too late, son. You're too late. Go back. Number two. He learns from a teacher called Raz Al Ghul. I know, sounds a bit weird. Despite his sinister and weird views, he still treats him with respect and learns from him. As a Muslim, we're taught to respect our teachers, regardless of them being Muslim or non-Muslim. The fact is they're disseminating knowledge to you. Yes, I use the big word. Number three, he wants Gotham to be a better place. He doesn't just sit on his armchair and just point fingers at other people. He says, no, it's got to be me. You see all those problems happening in Oma? You're doing nothing. He's hanging about in the middle of the forest doing nothing. You're not even branching about. He's just standing. Why don't you do something? Hey? Oh, silent treatment. You know what, I've had enough. I'm going to make like a tree and leave. So what's the lesson? Lesson is in Islam, we're told not to sit and complain, but to get off our backside and do something ourselves. Now despite all the good he does, any regular person would love to take credit for it. <laughs> it's me Batman. Yeah. Can I get some large fries now? I won't be paying because well... <laughs> I, I'm Batman. So he doesn't take credit for it, but he puts on a mask to hide his identity. So someone who does good and doesn't reveal himself, that is the essence of humility. Prophet said, when you give charity, give that your right hand is giving, but your left hand doesn't even know. He's been given wealth, skills, resources. He's not a large man, you understand? He doesn't have a bit of a, you know, do they understand? Well, if Batman was fat, then he would become fat man, isn't it? So he's using all of this for the betterment of society. So what's the lesson? The lesson is that in Islam we're taught our bodies are loaned to us from Allah. Allah has given each and every individual some quality that can be used in the deen. So what's your talent then? For real? Man? 
Yeah, what's wrong with that? The next point, point number six. He has certain rules and principles which he adheres by. One principle is that he doesn't kill people. He doesn't use guns. That's his principle and he sticks by it. A lesson? Well, if that is his own principle and he believes in it so much, then as Muslims, our rules and principles come from Allah. Then why don't we adhere to them more than this Batman? <laughs> Don't worry, sorry, uh, last time, no, this, this, this is the last time, this is the last time. The seventh and final point, he only speaks what is necessary and then he just disappears. Well, the Prophet said, silence is salvation. He who remains silent has saved himself. Many arguments begin just because we can't keep our gob shut. So here's some nice advice from me. Shut it. <laughs> what do you mean that's offensive? Now on a serious note, we all wish to have superpowers. If you want to see a true superpower, look at a widow who brings up her children by herself, doesn't remarry. Or look at that guy who does farming, morning and evening, blood, sweat and tears for his children just so they can get a decent education. Or that husband and wife who stay together for the sake of their children so that their children won't come from a broken home. Ask that guy who is addicted to cigarettes but yet he plucks up the courage to give them up. These things are superpowers and we have these. So in reality, it's kind of like we are superheroes ourselves. We want all these special superpowers like flight. I want to fly. We'll just get on an aeroplane then, isn't it? I want invisibility. Well, if you want invisibility, just hide behind that couch. I want super speed. Well, just sit in a very fast car. But the things that I mentioned before, they take true guts. And they are the real superpowers. And now that we've established that you and me are superheroes, remember Mr. or Mrs. Superhero, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Don't even think about doing these outtakes, yeah? I'll kill you. Uh...